my name is Robert Tom. I'm an engineer at Fortinet and in this video I want to show you with Fortinet Deceptor how you can deploy and customize your, your decoys that you want to use in your network. Um, if you've missed my previous uh, recording where I've used Fortinet Deceptor to uh, detect and mitigate a ransomware attack, please have a look at that one uh, as well. And uh, if you're interested in deception technology, then I've also written an article about this specific uh, technology uh, on LinkedIn. So it's posted on my LinkedIn profile. Please have a look at that as well. For now, let's just stick to deploying decoys using for the deceptor. So once you've deployed for the deceptor, what basically happens is you get after you've pulled it down. So you've synchronized it with FortiGuard, you get a list of decoys that you have available to you to deploy. And as you can see, this is a uh, this is an extensive list, and uh, it varies. So there's some Linux decoys we use CentOS, uh, some ERP, some medical, point of sale, SAP, some OT, uh, and some Windows decoys. Every decoy uh, you can pull down from FortiGuard, and then once you've done that, it later becomes available to deploy in your network. And on every decoy, you can also see what sort of lures uh, you have at your disposal. So for the Linux uh, decoy, there's SSH, uh, there's Samba, there's HTTP, and a bunch of other lures. So those are the services that you can enable on your decoy. If, uh, for whatever reason, you want to use custom decoys, you can import your Windows ISO images and use those to, uh, to create your, your custom decoys. So if you have some sort of golden image that you use throughout your network, it to totally makes sense to use that same image to create decoys because they best resemble uh, your network, your deployment. Now, um, there's a wizard to deploy those decoys. And you know we can run through that wizard and actually start deploying a decoy. Uh, let's have a look. There's a bunch of decoys I already have up and running. We can have a look at those as well. One of them is a file server, and this is that CentOS decoy that I've mentioned uh, just now as well. If I click on the I, you can also see the configuration. So there's SSH enabled, uh, Samba is enabled with a username, password, user, user, and a file share name called finance. And there are some uh, network uh, configuration to it as well. So this one has already uh, been deployed. Um, how that would work. So let's you know start deploying another file server. Let's give it a, a random name here, it doesn't really matter for the demo. And let's uh, click CentOS. You see all those selected services that you can enable or disable. So I can enable, disable SSH, I can enable, disage, disable Samba, and I can do that for every single service that's available on this decoy. Also, uh, I can create my own lures. So if I have Samba enabled, I can add a lure with the username, password, share name. Um, but I don't have to do that, so let's cancel out here. I can also have Fortinet do that. So when you hit generate lures, what happens is you get random username passwords on all those services that you want to enable on your decoy. In the case of Samba, so file sharing, uh, there's also uh, random uh, share names uh, attached to it. So since I still have a file server up and running i'm not going to actually deploy this decoy but rather let's just deploy a, an iot decoy uh, i don't think no i don't have an iot decoy deployed yet so let's go through the wizard and create a new decoy my new decoy i want to call nvr i'm going to select the category iot and here you see the options within the iot category that i can use i'm interested in, in an ip camera and much like the file server, you have services that you can enable or disable. So these are what we call lures. Um, I actually have a, an archive file of videos that I want to use on my network video recorder. So I've just uploaded those. I can also say I want to create a, a username and a password to log into the web UI, which is one of the services I want to have enabled. Not really interested in PMP, not interested in SNMP, not interested in uh, real-time streaming. Uh, so this looks about right to me. And then there's some network configuration to do. So my host name remains NVR. I can choose what sort of network I want to deploy it in. There's two that I have configured that my deceptor is connected to. 
and I want to deploy it on this network. I can do that statically or dynamically and I need to give it a gateway. Also this MAC address, this is the OUI of the vendor of NVR that we're, we're actually deploying. So this is also a very important thing, otherwise it would stand out a little bit. And remember the goal is to attract a threat actor to hit one of our decoys. I'll choose the number of decoys I want to deploy and then I'll just give it a, uh, a bit of a random IP address. So once this is all done, I click done and deploy. And with the magic of video, my decoy was instantly deployed. Normally this would take about 30 seconds or so, depends a little bit on the type of decoy that you want to deploy. So let's double check if all the configuration is correct. Here you see username and password for the web UI of my newly deployed NVR. And also my gateway and my IP address. I've just deployed a single IP address. You can do multiples if you want uh, as well. Let's uh, see if we can reach it. So 10.0.0.90. There we go. Uh, I think it was user one, user one. And there we go. Those are my video streams. Like any other NVR, there's also multiple channels that we can use. So let's have a look. Apparently there's this guy creeping around in my garden, I noticed. So, um, and you can add multiple videos um, uh, if you want. Obviously that matches your environment, but my point here, it is absolutely possible. And since we've hit uh, the decoy, um, you can also see instantly that for the deceptor has seen traffic hitting the decoy and it saw exactly um, what, you know, what was done. So what channels were, were watched, what actions uh, were taken. And then per my article, you can choose what to do with this. So do I kick myself from the network instantly? Do I want to do other actions? That really depends and that needs a bit of a further discussion. So with that, I conclude my demo. Thank you for watching.